Hi everyone, this is our first lecture and this is a continuation of where we left off when I last saw you. So um, welcome back. I'm sure you missed lecturing and taking notes. So this is um, a global conflict and we today's goal is to explain the major changes to battle the home front politics and society brought on by World War I. Why is this important? To be able to see the far-reaching effects of the Great War. And you guys should complete your summary activity. That is what I want you to turn in. You can turn it in, upload it through Canvas, or you can turn it in by sharing it with me. If you decide to print out the notes and handwrite your summary, you can do that. Just take a photo of it and send it to me through email. So, Today's focus question is, how did the war change politics, economics, and society? That is what I need you to think about as we go through this. And you have to remember, politics has to do with governments. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, it became the Great War because many regions of the world were involved. So the Allies at this point wanted the Dardanelles. The Dardanelles is this area in... Um, between modern-day Turkey and like the Ottoman Empire and they fought a huge battle called the Battle of Gallipoli there. Um, the attack failed with great loss of life but T. Lawrence who was actually a uh, British archaeologist helped lead a much more successful Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire. So the Allies were able to capture several important cities in Southwest Asia because of this. All right, so as we can see here, we know that European countries had colonies in Africa, so um, they also had colonies in Asia. So what we see is Japan starts to take German colonies in China and in the Pacific, and the Allies capture the German colonies in Africa. So you can see these as German Southwest Africa, German East Africa, Cameroon, and Togoland. Um, this is just a map of what Asia looked like, and you should be familiar with this because we went over it. So we can see that everything um, that belonged to Germany, mostly far to the right of the screen, is what Japan took over. Back in Europe, we have the British using a strong navy blockade um, against Germany. So a blockade is basically... Um, they're blocking with their navy, with their ships. They're literally blocking the waters so that other ships with supplies are not going into Germany. Um, they want to cut off supplies to Germany because, of course, if they don't get supplies, their troops cannot keep going, their troops cannot keep fighting. So in response to this blockade, the Germans increased submarine attacks on the ships, bringing food and supplies to the Allies. Um, this became known as unrestricted submarine warfare. They're basically sinking any ship without warning in the waters around Great Britain. So that means in the Atlantic Ocean, right before reaching Great Britain, they're sinking any ships. And they don't really care if these ships are... Um, coming in with supplies or people um, for the enemy. They're just doing it. They're just sinking all these ships. So that becomes a real um, problem later on because that's what makes the United States join. So here's a cross-section of, of one of these submarines. They were called U-boats. Um, some of you did your presentations on this weapon so you should already know a little bit about this but you can see here really cool side view so as i mentioned the united states was neutral in the beginning but american ships were sunk by germany and american lives were lost um, so many americans became angry you can see here this is a photo of a newspaper um, 
that basically says that the, sh the U.S. ship, the Lusitania, is sunk and that uh, many people lost their lives. So this was something that um, the United States thought, yes, it was a really bad thing that happened, but um, it wasn't really enough to get them into the war, but it did get many Americans very angry. What actually um, caused the United States to join the war was this telegram. So the Zimmerman telegram is a secret or was a secret message proposing an alliance between Germany and Mexico. Um, and Germany offered to, uh, to help Mexico in this message. Um, they offered to regain, to help Mexico regain the land lost to the United States. Um, and as you can see, obviously even today, Mexico is right south of the border. So this was what caused the United States to declare war on Germany in April of 1917. So what areas outside of Europe were affected by the war? Hopefully you can start to brainstorm this. You should already know this is a quick review. We covered out a little bit of Africa and Asia and now we're looking at the United States. So when I talk about the home front, I'm talking about um, here in the United States. So when you think home front, I'm talking about the United States. What is happening here? So by 1917, the war had already killed millions. This is why it became known as the Great War. Um, total war means that um, this war demands all resources of the countries fighting in it to be produced for the war. So you can see here um, various posters, propaganda that were um, propaganda that was created to help to um, convince people to join the war. So the nurse it says, hold up your end. War fund week, $100 million. So they're basically asking for everybody to contribute to the war. I have a really cool uh, propaganda poster um, that I have here at my house, and I was going to take it in to work to show it to you guys. But unfortunately, you know, this is going on. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe you can ask later, and I will take a photo of it and post it on Canvas. Anyway. Um, the government took control of factories here on the home front, and this they basically told these factories what to produce and how much of it to make. Um, there was also rationing. The government started to limit how much food and other goods people could buy, so you could not buy in bulk. Um, this is meant to help make sure the armies had all, all the supplies they needed during the time, and they started using propaganda the government started using propaganda to get support for the war and um, they tried to silence those who dissented who spoke out against the war so um if you I spoke out against the war back then if you lived back then it was not a good thing you would probably um be silenced by people or by the government so here's an example of more propaganda I recently saw this with all that's going on with coronavirus. I recently saw this as like a meme on Instagram. So you may have seen this. There are more propaganda posters here. So this one says, gee, I wish I were a man. I joined the Navy. And then it says, be a man and do it. United States Navy recruiting station. So it's encouraging men to join the army. Um, for women, there is many changing roles. They did play a growing role in economics. Um, many women did work in the factories and offices and shops, and they built planes and tanks and grew food and made clothing. So these changes had an impact on people's attitudes to what kind of work women could do because traditionally they were not working, they were at home. Here are some photos of them in the factories. Um, they are making the machinery that went out to the soldiers to help them fight. So this is just a question for you to review. This is also good to think about what is happening today. And Russia, 
um, things were not very good. So there was a revolution. Russia had to leave the war in 1917. And they basically signed this peace treaty with Germany it's called the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk um, because they could no longer maintain their armies in the war. Um, there was a lot of suffering in Russia. The Russian people's support for the Tsar um, was not there because of the war. So in March of 1917, he actually stepped down. This is Nikki, Tsar Nicholas II. Um, the new government hoped to keep fighting in the war, but the armies refused to continue. So um, after this, there was a huge revolution in Russia that broke out and the communists end up taking control of the Russian government. We're going to cover this later, but um, with this treaty that Germany signed, they actually gave up huge amounts of land in return for peace. So that's how they stepped out of the war. By 1917, the U.S. enters the war. We already saw this earlier. And um, by March of 1918, Germany tries one final attack on Paris. The Allies, however, were very successful in pushing the Germans back thanks to these fresh American troops that people refer to as doughboys. So these American young men who were ready to fight and they were victorious in keeping the Germans from attacking Paris. Eventually, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Turks surrender. Um, there is a revolution in Austria-Hungary that does not allow them to continue fighting um, or weakens them. And Kaiser Wilhelm II is forced to step down. Eventually, um, there is an agreement to stop fighting. This is called an armistice. You do need to know this. I believe it is on your study guide. So please make sure you um, highlight it on your notes or maybe bold it if you can. Um, you will see that this armistice was fought, was signed in on November 11th, 1918. So November 11th today is Veterans Day. This is just another question for you to think about. So the legacy of the war, um, about 37 million people died, 20 million, 21 million were wounded. The economies of different nations were suffering and they suffered all throughout the 1920s, except for the U.S. economy. Farms were destroyed, factories were ruined, especially, I'm mostly talking about Europe here. And if we look at war today, it may, it may have cost up to $338 billion in damage. A war had an emotional cost too. People felt all the suffering had no purpose. There was no point to having fought this war. A lot of art and literature in the 1920s reflected this sense of hopelessness and disaffection. So this feeling of um, disillusionment. So this is a modern art piece called The Charge of the Lancers. So everything's just kind of chaotic and you don't really know what's going on. So you can think of the questions I posted here. But it's basically very chaotic. For your summary section, this is what I want you to do and this is what I want you to turn in, whether you take a photo or upload it. Please jot down some changes brought on by World War I, such as war tactics, um, changes in war tactics, changes in society, economics, and politics. This is all for now. If you guys have any questions, please join the zoom meeting today at um from 12 30 to 1 i will also have tomorrow i will also have one tomorrow thursday um from 12 30 to 1 in case you have any questions you can always email me as well or shoot me a message through canvas and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible that's it for now guys um i hope you guys have a good day and try to Keep calm and think that everything's going to be okay. See you next time.